I started off yesterday's episode talking about how we got ducks. And ducky ducky ducks. <laughs> the quacky quacks. They were assorted. I'm gonna go this way so maybe better lighting. But I'm pretty positive they're runner ducks. <laughs> oh yeah, look at how just stands tall. <laughs> oh, he's so cute. <laughs> Here we go. You got him? They gotten so big so fast. One day and they doubled in size. I think so. It That's seems like crazy. It. Oh, they're so cute. So pretty sure they're chocolate runner ducks. Uh, they'll get about three to five pounds. Uh, we'll know in a couple weeks if they're male or female. It'll be uh, mostly their beak color will change. If it's a male, it'll turn green. If it's a female, it'll stay brown or it could be brown and orange. But typically the darker the beak, the more likely it's going to be a female. And right now, one of them has a super dark beak and the other one's a little bit lighter. Yeah, maybe we have a male and female. That'd be great. That'd be cool. Uh, and they're really good egg layers and they're really good bug and pest control. So we're excited. They'll be fun. <laughs> Where are you going? Okay. Oh. We're going to try this again today. Yep. See how we, far we get. We tried this yesterday. And as soon as we sat down, the dogs came over. So we just kind of waited for them to settle down and chill. And then when they were done with that, my body just said, <laughs> Nate, you're done for the day. Not today. <laughs> I, had, I had no energy, no energy at all. So I said, okay, well, you suggested that you can just do it yourself. I said, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then he got up and went. And <laughs> I walked inside. I lay down in the bed, just fell face forward on the bed, and I fell asleep for three hours, two, two and a half hours, <laughs> two and a half hours. I was awoken by a text from Ethan, from my son, saying that in 30 minutes, my favorite band, Blind Pilot, was going to have a, um, a pre-release listening of the mm -hmm. new album, and they were going to chat along and on a site called Bandcamp. Bandcamp. Mm -hmm. So I stayed up for that. That was 35 minutes, 40 minutes, and then fell back asleep again and didn't wake up until eight this morning. Oh, well, lucky. It was... Nice. I was, I was exhausted. Yeah. I, so, so I'm glad that Katie had the energy to continue <laughs> on with keeping it Kramer, because yeah. I certainly did not. <laughs> we have did about not. two minutes of him sitting here like, <laughs> I was like, I, I don't have the energy to talk. Yep. I just, I just wore myself out. Fun fact about Blind Pilot, Nate and I sang one of their songs to each other while we were walking down the aisle. That's right. Aisle. We got married on a beach, a public beach. In Astoria. In Astoria, where Blind, uh, well, where the Blind leads, Pilot was. Yeah, at the time where mm -hmm. they lived. So yeah, it's kind of, kind of a fun little fact. It was, uh, we sang the song, Three Rounds in a Sound. Yeah, which, which is funny, it's a breakup song. Yeah. But it doesn't sound like a breakup song it at doesn't. all. Mm -hmm. like, it doesn't. It's, it's very much, it may have been, I don't know. It, 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 it's a very good love song. Yeah. Hi boys, you decided that you see us? Hi guys. Here's my lap doggies. <laughs> Levi's gotten big. He's gotten bigger, yeah. He's he's not as it's not such a large size discrepancy between him and Winston anymore. No. Nope. He's still smaller, but yeah, he's gotten taller. My he's bad. actually they're actually the same height now. <laughs> Sweet boy. You're gonna let me brush you today, right? Yes. Nope. No. <laughs> he's like, no. <laughs> he he's gonna get brushed whether he wants it or not. Hey buddy. He yeah. goes through the brambles and then he gets mats really bad. Yeah, he's very, very matted. Yeah, so I... He's got a stick hanging from his He does have a stick hanging from, from his tail. tail. Um, I don't believe in shaving dogs because, especially ours, they get sunburnt and it's actually... Believe it or not, their fur is an insulator mm -hmm. and it actually does help keep them a little cooler. Uh, but I will trim him down and I, I'll shave like his back hocks and stuff where he doesn't need the excess, but no. we'll, we'll keep his main body fur and all of that. And I'm not gonna trim him any shorter than 
they're designed with the exception of their tail and their hocks. And of course the pads of their feet. That's always a necessary trim. Oh. Hmm. I, Just so they don't get stuff stuck in it, yeah. um, like sap and stuff, because then it can start to mat up and then get really tight in there for them. Mm, ouch. Yeah, so. Huh. Well, it was another successful day in the house. Um, the countdown is on. <laughs> so the drywall people are available starting the second week of September. I will be gone. Cool. Uh, yeah. So that's what, three weeks from now? Yep. About, yeah. Ooh, that's going to be tight. Four weeks. It's close. It's if it's the, four it's weeks, the, I, can, I think I can do it. It's the 16th right now. So it's close. Yeah, yeah. So between three and four weeks. Yeah. So it's just a, an everyday hustle as much as I possibly can hustle with it. Hi, bud. Um, but nope, what I'm, what I'm working on right now is putting in um, blocking and <gasps> strapping. Oh, he just, did he just rip the... He just got to, he just got to the fabric. He, Winston's over there making himself a cool spot in the rocks and he's digging a nice little, a nice little spot for him to lay down in and his nail got all the way down to the fabric. fabric. Um, so what I'm doing now is I'm doing blocking and strapping for seismic and strong wind force forces. Uh, and then it's a little bit more demo. I have to demo out the, the doorway into the bathroom from the master. The new. The new master bedroom. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then after that, just then it's starting on, on all of the electrical. Mm -hmm. So I feel like, I feel like it's doable. Yeah. It's nice having a, like a date to work towards. Otherwise it's pretty easy to slack off. Yeah. But I feel you there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of what I've been working on today. Um, update on those wasps. They're still alive and they're still coming and going out of that area over by where I was trying to put the mini split. And so I haven't done anything on the mini split and I don't think the wasps are going to die anytime soon. So I'm going to have to just, these little bugs, going to have to just climb up on the ladder and spray their nest in the evening. Mm -hmm. Which, climbing up on the ladder over there is <coughs> not going to be easy because the ground slopes downward. Yeah. So I won't have like a good place to put the ladder up onto. Yeah. But. You'll figure it out. <coughs> oh, thanks. I'm sure I will. Because <laughs> I'm not doing the thing where I climb up on the roof and I lean over the side and I spray. No, no I'm not doing that. No. Uh, somebody did ask in a comment uh, where you were able to find boric acid. They weren't able to find any. Amazon. Oh, Amazon. Okay. Yeah. There you go. I bought I bought the boric acid powder. Um, I don't know, like a year ago. Yeah. Because I was going to use it for a pest control for something in the garden. I don't remember what it was, mm. but I bought it. it it's yeah. It had been sitting in the RV for some time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe more than two years ago. No, it was when we were at Mr. Wayne's, I'm pretty sure. Oh yeah, maybe it was, yeah. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a minute. It's been a while, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I doubt it'll it'll go bad, as long as it doesn't get all wet. Mm -hmm. I think may, maybe we're using it for ants. I think that might Because be you can good. do boric acid with like powdered sugar and stuff, and they'll take away both and eat both, and then the, the colony dies. Mm. So anyway, um, yeah, just Amazon. I don't, um, I don't know where else to really buy it because you can go to like Lowe's and Home Depot and those stores and you can get some stuff that is insect that mm -hmm. has it, but it's not 100% boric acid, so it's not really the same. It's not as potent. No, not as potent. So I don't know if this stuff's working or not. I don't see, I don't ever see any wasps go into the, Can? the cans. Yeah. I mean, I'm not sitting there and watching them all day long. Maybe we they could are. put a trail cam on it, but they're probably not. They pro I don't know if they. I don't know if it would trigger yeah, it. Trigger it, yeah, yeah. So I don't know. So I'm just going to spray them down with the um, the wasp spray. I mean, basically the wasp spray sprays like a 25 foot stream of it, and it's just like two percent permethrin. Mm. So it's not anything special. <laughs> but I did find out that if you don't want to use permethrin or any sort of chemical to kill wasps. You can just spray them down with 
uh, soapy water, just Dawn. Dawn, like a good high concentrated Dawn to, to water. And you spray them and they die just as fast as the permethrin. Crazy. Yeah, because I guess the, the Dawn breaks their exo exoskeleton and the water penetrates and oh. they, they drown. So as soon as you spray them, they're too heavy to fly, so they fall and then they just, they die. That's kind of sad, but they're wasps. So. Yeah, I, I'm sure wasps have a purpose in the ecological system of things, but... Not ones that just come after us. No, not, not the mean, <laughs> aggressive ones. I mean, supposedly the red wasps are not supposed to be mean and aggressive, but these are not very friendly, so they're just gonna go. Yeah. Anyway, so long story short about that is I haven't worked on the air conditioner, the mini split heat pump, because of the wasps. And I could use it because it gets really hot in the house. It gets real, real warm. Yeah, it'd be nice to have it running. Yeah. Oh, and then I found out, so I, I put the, the head unit up on the wall. Mm -hmm. I put, you know, a, a piece of drywall mm -hmm. up and I, and I put insulation up before the drywall. Yep. I used the wrong insulation because that wall is a six, a two by six wall. Mm. So I could have used R19 because it's a thicker mm -hmm. bat and I only used R15 because that's what I've been used to using. So now I have to take it down Put the right insulation up. Get the get the full R19 in. Oh, she had an itch. Yep. Anyway. Anywho. <laughs> you know, it's All just it's just the things. It's just the things. All it's, the things. It's it's the things that I have going on right now. Is is just I'm hyper focused on the house. Yep. The tractor needs to go in for service. <laughs> I thought I was going to do it myself, but it that's time consuming. And I don't have all of the equipment that I need to do it. So I have to buy a bunch of equipment. I don't want to do that. So, but that, then I have to drive all the way out to Johnson City to the Kubota <laughs> there. He's, he's working his way over. He is, because that's the nearest location to have it serviced. <laughs> and unless I want to drive up and over to Asheville and go back to the place that I bought it from. But I don't want to do that because the post sales support was really horrible. Yeah. So that'd be an all day thing. So I'm putting that off. I think once I have drywall, once I'm drywall ready, I can do that. Yeah. But um, so that, and then there's still, I need to like fix the whole thing on the top of the RV with all of that insulation. It's hanging down. It's just now. hanging down. It's just, it's awful. It's, it, yeah. It, it just, it worked for a couple of years. Oh no, we're great. And I need to put new stuff up. Yeah. But I've been so hyper focused on getting this house done. So anyway, just lots of lots of things not being done that should be done, but getting the house done. Yeah. I was uh, spending the majority of my day booking travel, which sounds exciting, but it's just for work. So I was looking at flights and hotels and rental cars and all of that. And now I'm working on a multi-leg trip where I'm going to three cities, two states, over a two week span, but I don't have a break in between. The events are literally back to back to back to back. <laughs> so like the one day that the event ends, I'll be traveling to the next event and it starts the very next day, but it'll be going from Michigan to Boston. Ow! Okay, buddy. Oh, that hurt so bad. Did he just bend your arm backwards? Uh -huh. He just put all of his weight and bent me back that way. Mm, on this? Yeah, ouch. <laughs> Sorry, buddy, but ow. <laughs> All right. Good thing you're hypermobile. Yeah, it still hurt. <laughs> buddy. <laughs> He's like, I love you. You have to give it a rest there, buddy. Yep, I'm gonna break me. So you'll be gone so for a while then. I will be gone for two weeks in September, back to back. I'll be home for a couple days in between. Uh, and then I'll be home for two weeks and then I will be gone for two solid weeks. Complete, like no break in between, just completely gone. And then when I get back, I'll have an event, but it's virtual. And then it, two days later, I'll be leaving for my last event and I'll be gone for about five, five or six days. So all in all, I'll be gone three of the four weeks in, in October. In October, yeah. And then I'll be done. And because 
like I mentioned, I'm working solid for two weeks without any days off whatsoever. And the days, they're typically starting between 6.30 and 7 a.m. and they go till about 9 or 10 p.m. I'll be able to get um, flex days. And so I won't have to take my vacation or any PTO. I'll be able to actually just come back and just take extra days off. So when I am back, I'll have do you need to take the entire month of November off? I can't. I have enough PTO to do that. <laughs> you should. <laughs> and then, yeah. And then two weeks in December, and then the last two weeks in December are already off, and then yep. basically have two months off. Yeah, pretty much. I have enough PTO. I could take all of November and all of January off if I wanted. Okay, dude. You. What are you doing, you goof? Ah, all done. <laughs> Yeah, so it'll be a bunch of travel. So we're trying to get as much done as we can now and obviously get things better situated and any, like the projects that I'm working on, I'm gonna try to have them completely done before I leave because, yeah. you know, yeah. obviously I won't be of any help or any assistance whatsoever for at least five weeks coming up. Yeah. Which is, you know, Put, can put you back on your time scale a little bit if oh yeah you know because now you'll have chores and stuff right. yep and if anything happens with the animals then it's it's all on you so that's always the hard part about my job and thankfully i don't have to travel nearly as much as i used to i used to be gone a lot more mm -hmm. throughout the year now it's all kind of compacted into one time frame which is easier but it's also kind of yeah the timing it's, just is it's bad. It's easier or harder. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's just I'm just gone for a much longer stint than I used to be. It used to be like three, four days, and then I'd be back for a couple weeks, and then I'd be gone for three, four days, then I'd be back, and then, you know, so now it's just kind of just one, almost one big, long trip. Yeah. But, yeah it'd be interesting. We'll see yeah. how it goes. I'm driving to one of the locations because it's only a couple hours away, so that's kind of that's kind of cool. That's kind of nice, and so I just get a rental car, and so he doesn't have to worry about taking me to the airport, and I don't have to worry about flights. Mm -hmm. It's the biggest thing I'm nervous about right now, because both of us, the last couple times we've flown, have had pretty bad experiences. Yeah, flying has not been very pleasant mm -mm. lately. It's been real rough, and yep. so I think that with uh, the driving, I was excited, but I'm a little nervous for that multi-leg trip where I'm, you know, I'm traveling on the day before the event starts. And so if I miss it, there's nobody there to set everything up because I'm the main point of contact and I'm the only one on my team traveling to it. So mm. I'm a little nervous with how tight that is. Yeah. So I'm going to train up some people and have them on standby just in case anything happens with my flights. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's always yeah. nerve wracking because I, I like to get there a full day ahead of time. We kind of need you to make sure make sure you have time for mm -hmm. any things that's unforeseen. Yeah, because I usually check. I, w I like to check into the hotel, put all my stuff away, and then I go check out the venues, make sure, because I'm always in different places. Very rarely am I ever in the same location, so everything's brand new. I have to learn where everything's at, where to pick up all of my equipment that I had shipped over. So it's just, it's just a lot of, you know, organization. And then if, you know, goodness, if... Uh, your stuff doesn't arrive, then it's tracking it all down and making sure you have the right amount of boxes and all of your signage showed up. And yeah, there's just, you know, there's a lot of moving pieces to what I do. So yeah. it's just <laughs> making sure it's all organized and all good, but it's fun. It goes quick, mm -hmm. even though they're really, really long days. Yeah, very hectic long days, but yeah. that makes it go quick. Yeah, on your feet constantly. Mm -hmm. uh, Hopefully you don't get sick sick again. I know last time I did one of these huge stents, I got super, super sick and I was down for like four or five days. Yep. The last event I was at, actually, I never even, I made it to the event one day and I missed the last four days of it and finally started feeling well enough to fly home on the, on the last part. They were going to send me home earlier, but I, I, there was no way I would have been able to make a flight. It was crazy. I think that was when listen to your body and take a break. So yeah. I'm just gonna have to tell people, hey, I, <laughs> I'm not as young as I used to be. I can't do these like <laughs> crazy 90 hour weeks. <laughs> I was reading an article, I guess there's been a study showing that there's two major health milestones in your, your, your um, growing up. Mm -hmm. 
So when you reach age, approximately age 40 and age 60, there's a significant change in your health status mm. and your body's ability to- I feel that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so. The last few years have been. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That, that explain why we don't have quite the energy that we used to. And yeah, so I guess age four, around age 40 and 60 are my, huge milestones mm -hmm. in, in body health. Interesting. Yeah. I'm in trouble for 60. <laughs> Both of us are. <laughs> yeah. oh, that'd be bad. I'll be taking a lot more naps. <laughs> <laughs> Pulling out the inner uh, uh, Jeff from Bobble Homestead in me, just taking a daily nap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, we did that on our honeymoon. It was nice. Naps? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was the first time I'd ever taken a nap in my adult life. I used to work at this very small company when uh, I was a recruiter, and both the owner and the kind of administrative type person that, that led the front office, they both loved to take naps. So in our break room, we had a couch and naps were encouraged on your breaks, like on your lunches and your breaks. It was the weirdest thing to me. <laughs> I mean, it's a couch that you, you, you take meetings on and guests come and sit like a waiting room area and then mm -hmm. people were taking naps on it. I mm -hmm. was like, I can't, I can't get behind this. This is mm -hmm. weird. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it was just a very odd thing for me to comprehend. And I'd go in there and I'd feel so bad because I was on my lunch and they're sleeping and I'm trying to be quiet, heating yeah, up my just, food. Uh -huh. It was just that's odd. Just <laughs> it's like, I just, don't like this. Just weird. Uh -uh. <laughs> so I, I just started, it was when I was in Portland, so, and I worked downtown, so it was nice because there was food carts like two blocks away and I could just walk and go pretty much get anything. So I would just eat in my office or I'd eat outside. <laughs> Cause it was like, I'm, I'm good. I don't need to use the break room anymore. <laughs> Yeah, that's one thing I do miss is having quick access to really good food carts and and places to eat. Yeah, yeah. The food scene, that's probably been the hardest transition, I think, moving here has been just going from anything you could possibly think of, anything you were craving was available. Mm -hmm. I, anything, like, yeah. You, it, it, the most random things and you could find somewhere in Portland that had it. Or, I mean, there's a grilled cheese double-decker bus. <laughs> there is, you know, just all sorts of random stuff. Uh, macaroni and cheese food carts, uh, all sorts of just really good um, you're, stuff. Yeah, tacos. you're craving Thai food. Oh, I've been craving Thai food for years. Ever since we've moved here, we haven't been able to find good Thai food. And so I'm getting a little better at cooking it. It's just learning all of the ingredients. Uh, but every time I travel, if I travel to a bigger city, mm -hmm. it's, it's the, if anyone asks me what I want to eat, it's always Thai food. And they're getting so used to it now if they've traveled with me before. And they're like, is that all you ever eat? And I was like, no, I haven't had it since the last trip. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, it's been six months for me. <laughs> There's probably a good Thai place in Knoxville. Yeah, uh, the Modern Yeoman, they were gonna show mm. us one that they like when they're out you know, in the Knoxville area or next time we're out there. Mm. Speaking um, of uh, the Yeoman, I reached out to Yeoman and to Wilson mm -hmm. asking if they were both available either this weekend or the next weekend for a brunch. And Yeoman said that they are not this weekend, hmm. but they are potentially next weekend. He'll get back to me. And Wilson said either is fine. Either is fine. Yeah, cool. so we'll be having a brunch with... A friend's brunch. A friend's brunch. Yep. The two of us, Wilson and his wife, the Yeoman and the baby. And the bubba. The baby, yeah. So I'm excited cool. for that. That'll be fun. Yeah. Because, you know, it gets a little lonely. Yeah. It gets a little lonely. It'd be nice to, I was, I was chatting with, um, over text with Wilson today and telling him, he's like, yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of lonely. He goes, well, you just work, work, work. So we're going to set up like an outing mm. of going out and doing something. So he gave me a long list of suggestions. He said, feel free to shoot any of these down. Some of them sound kind of cool, uh, like going skeet shooting or fishing, or 
hiking, no. not so much. <laughs> like not vetoing yeah, hiking. Uh, yeah, not so, not so much, but you know, stuff like that. Yeah. You know, just, and he goes, he's only been to one baseball game and he had fun. He might do a baseball game. So anyway, just go out and, <laughs> thanks Kinsley, go out and do something. Yeah. That's off the homestead. Just different. Not work related, just have a day. Yeah. So it'll be fun. Yeah, I went to a baseball game when I was in San Diego for work because we actually had some spare time. And both doggies ran off through. Yeah, through the sheep paddock. Yep. Yeah. So. Yeah, good. Be fun. Yeah. Be fun. It's good to get off the homestead with people. Yes, exactly. You know, every once in a while. Yes. As much as I'm totally fine most times, just, <laughs> you know. Nice to talk to somebody else besides me, huh? <laughs> yeah. All right, anything else, love? No, dear. <laughs> <laughs> uh, tomorrow, 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 tomorrow is the 17th, I, I think. I think so. I think today's the 16th, pretty sure. Uh, 16th. So oh, our to tomorrow is the 16th. The 16th, we're doing a giveaway. And I will tell you about the giveaway tomorrow, but we're doing a giveaway tomorrow. Very different than... A very different type of giveaway. Yeah. Very, very different. Not homestead related. Definitely not homestead related. Yeah. But it's related to something we talked about today. <laughs> so stick around for tomorrow. We'll see you or then. come back. How about just come back? Just wait around. It's only 24 hours. You got this. You can do this. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye. I wonder what it was. I don't know. Kinsley's not going under, but she's... Huh. Must be something. Yeah. The dogs have been just kind of going in and out of these woods, just barking, barking, barking. I really hope a bear didn't come back and decide it wants to live in our woods. It might, have, might be. That would not be good. Well, let's go check it out. Okay.